Welcome back to another video and in today's episode we shall be adding bullets to our gun so we will be able to shoot if we have a gun equipped also we will be able to zoom in and our character is going to be rotated with the camera as long as we hold the mouse right key or whatever key you decide to use for aiming and well we can't shoot without a gun but if we equip a gun we can shoot some very basic bullet systems uh, right now they're very slow as you can see but that's just so that we can actually see what is happening and whether the bullets are actually getting spawned and and where whether they are flying later we are going to adjust a lot of these things we're gonna have different fire rates for different weapons we're gonna have different uh, bullet speeds also for different weapons different damages um, yeah so everything is going to be adjusted it just basically takes a little more time uh, to do it than just in a single video so let's begin so the first thing that I want to do is in my inventory folder I'm going to create a new blueprint class for my bullet and I'm going to use a static static mesh actor and I'm gonna call that bullet BP let's open this up well for now I don't have a bullet mesh for it so I'm just gonna use a sphere for now I might uh, change that a little bit later now but this sphere in my case is gonna be way too big so I'm gonna change the scaling to 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 in all of the axes and now also we need to change a couple of parameters we gotta make sure that this thing in the mobility is set to be movable uh, because well obviously it's gonna be flying so we need it to be movable also I want to simulate physics so that there would be a bullet drop in the distance so the further we shoot it so that it, it actually like goes down like gravity affects it in real life and also in the collisions on the collision presets I'm gonna change the physics actor into a custom preset because we want to ignore our camera otherwise if the bullet is going to be close to the camera it's going to give a weird flickering it's going to interact with the camera and that's not what we want to do also since what well, we are creating this for a multiplayer we want to scroll down and we want to replicate this component this is very necessary otherwise it's not going to work and also once we hit something i want this bullet to be destroyed so we need to create the on component hit event over here and from this one we can simply just destroy the actor itself uh, later this is going to be the location where the damaging is going to happen but for now uh, we are only going to destroy the actor itself but by default the hit event is disabled so you gotta click on your static mesh component scroll up back to the collisions and the first thing you see in the collisions tab is simulation generates hit events and by default it is false you need to set this to true otherwise the hit event is not gonna work so once we have done that I believe that is all that we need to do with the static mesh component now let's select on the self-reference because well for multiplayer we need to replicate the movement of this one since this is gonna move and we need to replicate the whole actor itself as well then the next thing which is probably the most important part I believe uh, we need to add a component called projectile movement and this is the thing that's actually going to allow us to shoot this bullet so that it would fly away um, right now technically we could change the initial speed over here also we could change the velocity as well but we're gonna do that in the constru on construction script what is important to keep in mind of is that the velocity should only be set for the x-axis because this is a relative value uh, for the actor itself so always the X is going to be like this way forward if we set the correct rotation once we spawn the actor and we're going to use our camera rotation and we're basically going to shoot the uh, bullet in the direction where we are facing now also again since this is a multiplayer we need to replicate this component as well and I believe for now this is all good now let's go to the construction script and set up the initial speed and velocity I'm gonna do that in the construction script because later we're gonna pass along different values depending on different weapons different bullet speeds and all that stuff so I'm gonna drag in the projectile movement set the initial initial speed there we go for now I'm gonna set this to be like thousand uh, later it's gonna be faster for different weapons and I also want to set the velocity as well so let's set that and like I mentioned previously only in the x-axis so I'm gonna give this a value of 100 for now and yeah I believe that is all that we need to do in this actor as of right now 
So let's close that and now let's, well first, this is gonna be really quick, I wanna add a crosshair to my screen, I don't have one, so I will open up my UI HUD, where I have my basic stuff, the health bars and everything, so this widget is always on my screen. So I, I have a small cheat, what I us usually do is drag in a text, anchor this to the very middle of the screen, and then I usually do one of the two things, I can do like a dot, or I can do a plus sign. I will do a plus sign in this case. Uh, I will make this a little bit smaller. It's not important. As long as we adjust this to the middle of the screen like this, this should be just fine. So the bullet is going to fly where the crosshair is showing because we're, we're shooting the bullet from the middle of the screen forward. So that should be the direction. Now that this is done, you can see we have a crosshair in the middle of the screen. And this actually also allows us to interact with the pickups and chests a little bit easier because, well, we know where we are facing. Now, what I want to change is my camera because I don't really like the way where it is in the character. Um, it's behind our character, so always our line trace is going through the character itself. I want to adjust it to be kind of next to the character. So I'm going to select my camera, boom, and I'm going to change some values. So I will have like 50 in the Y and 40, 40 in the Z axis like this. And also I don't want it to be that far away. So I'm going to change the target arm length to be 200 so that it's a little bit closer than it was before. Also, I want to make another configuration which allows us to like zoom in and zoom out once we are aiming. So we'll go to the event graph. I will add a new variable and I'm going to call this is aiming and this is a boolean value. Uh, let's make sure that we are replicating this because this is going to be needed later for the animations as well for the aiming animations. And then what I want to do is do a right mouse button event so that once we press the button, I want to set the is aiming to be true and also we need to change a parameter well I want to change a parameter in the third person character because as of right now if we would press play you can see the camera is turning around the character uh, but the character is not um, moving with the camera as well so I want to rotate my character with the camera whenever I'm holding down the right mouse button if you want to have it constantly open up your third person character self-reference look for Jov so use rotation uh, use controller rotation Jov and set this to be true I want this only to be true once we hold the button so I will just simply set uh, con controller job so use controller rotation job set this to be true and then I want to do a timeline so that the camera would actually zoom in so I'm gonna add a timeline and I'm gonna call this camera zoom timeline so let's open this up and I want this length to be like 0.2 so that's really quick we zoom in and zoom out really quickly so we don't have to wait for it too long let's add a new float track to this and Right now, in the camera boom, we are changing the uh, target arm length. By default, it's going to be 200. So, I'm going to right click in the timeline, add a new key. So, at the beginning of the timeline, so time zero, the value needs to be 200. So, this value that we have right now. Then, I will add another key. And at the end of this, so point two, I want this to be zoomed in to 100. Now that we have done that, let's click on this zoom fit vertical so that we can see the whole thing. Let's click on one of these, hold shift, click on the other one. So now both of these are selected. We can right click and set this to be auto. So now this gives us a little smoother, uh, smoother swap between the positions. So back in our event graph, now what we can do is on update, we can drag in our camera boom and we can set the target arm length target arm length to be this new track from the timeline like so now for the released let's copy these two boolean values let's plug those into the released and let's set these to false so that well we are no longer aiming and we no longer want our character to rotate with the camera and then the execution can go into the reverse so that the camera would zoom back out and that's basically all for the right click event. So now if we would try this once we hold the key, you can see the character is instantly rotating with us whenever we are aiming. So that is exactly what I wanted to achieve. 
So now back in our third person character, let's actually spawn the bullet. Uh, for this one, since this again is for the multiplayer, we need to have a custom event, which I'm gonna call server spawn bullet. And this event then needs to be ran on server. And then we just simply want to spawn actor from a class. And the class is going to be our bullet that we just created. So once we have done that, let's split our transform pin because we want to provide it a spawn location and a spawn rotation. Both of these are very, very important. So now we have those set up. So everything should be good on this one. Now we need another, another event once we shoot a gun. So I'm going to have the left mouse button event. And now I want to make sure that I have a weapon in my hand. So I'm going to drag in my equipment array to know uh, what's inside of my right hand. So I'm going to get a copy to my right hand. In my case, that is the index number three. Then we can split the pins, split the item as well. And then we can get the data table row. So get data table row, plug in the name as well, connect the execution to the pressed. And now from the outro, we can break the S inventory structure because, well, this is our item structure and it contains all the information about our items, our weapons and everything. Over here, I want to do a switch on the type. So switch on string. And depending on the weapon type, we're going to have some different shooting later on. For now, well, all the guns are going to be shooting exactly at the same same rate and same manner. Uh, later, we're going to adjust that. Right now, I only have two types of weapons in my items database. So one of them is the pistol and the other one is the rifle. Now, once we got that done, the next thing would be to do a if branch check. Uh, because, well, in this case, over in the switch, if it passes along, it goes through one of these routes, that means, well, we have a pistol or a rifle. If it's not a pistol or a rifle, it's going to go through the default route, which is empty for us. And that is exactly what we want. So if we have one of these types, then we want to check if we are aiming. So is aiming. And then if that is true, then we can uh, do the server spawn bullet. If you are doing this for a single player, uh, you don't have to have this server spawn bullet. You can just simply spawn actor from class right away. Now for the spawn location and for the transform rotation, what we want to do is get our camera. And just like well, I've done in many, many videos before, we want to get the world location of this thing of our camera. So where is the camera located at, then we want to get the world rotation as well. And also we need to get the forward vector itself as well because well, I don't want to spawn my bullet right from the camera, I want to spawn it a little bit in front of it. So I'm going to take the forward vector, and I'm going to multiply that with let's say like 300 units in front of my camera is going to be where the bullet is going to be spawned in. So I'm going to do world location of the camera plus those 300 units in front of the camera. And I'm going to use that for the spawn location. For the spawn rotation, we just can simply use the camera rotation because well, it's in the same rotation as we uh, as we need it. So now let's let's give this a try. Let's press play. And again, like I often do, I will do my testing from the from the client. So let's pick up ourselves some guns. So let's let's actually first let's try to shoot something. So you can see nothing is happening because we don't have a gun. Let's have a rifle. And now once we have a rifle, you can see the bullets are getting spawned. And they're flying exactly in the same way as we want them to spawn in. Well, they are, right now they are very slow, as you can see. That's because, well, the initial speed and the velocity are not the, at the highest values. Uh, but, well, later for, for different weapons, we're going to have different types of bullet speeds. So don't worry about that. This is going to be adjusted. And every single gun will have their own different um, uh, fire rates, different types of bullet speeds, and all that stuff as well. And now I just want to make sure that the other guy sees it. Yeah, the other guy is seeing that the bullets are flying next to his head. So everything seems to be working like we need it to. 
So that's basically going to be it for today's video. Hope you learned something new. We have added some projectiles. Uh, obviously, if you don't have like actual guns, if you have maybe like bows or whatever, the idea is exactly the same. All you would do is just simply instead of having like a bullet mesh, you need to have a, a arrow mesh. But the idea itself is exactly the same thing. So yeah, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I see you in the next video.